Hey allies, what's up? Taylor here with Iron Allies Fitness in Salt Lake City, Utah. So today I want to go over a concept with nutrition that I think is super important that a lot of people overlook and a lot of people don't really know quite what all this means. So I'm going to dumb it down to uh, make very basic sense to you. And I'm going to give you one uh, major key piece of advice that um, a lot of fitness professionals and uh, people who do like nutrition coaching and personal training, they don't tell you about this. And um, it's one of the, it's the main reason why a lot of you who focus on weight loss or fat loss or have done diets in the past, why you continue to go through that yo-yoing cycle of, you know, you lose weight and then you're super disciplined and then you fall off the wagon or you eat a little bit extra and then you end up getting the weight back or more, that kind of thing. So let's go through this concept together. Basically, this is some basic concepts about how your calorie burn from your metabolism works. So what you can do is, if you want, you can go to ironalliesfitness.com forward slash nutrition dash calculator. Um, that's a tool you can use. There's a lot of numbers on there. Just pay attention to the ones that we're gonna talk about today. Okay, so BMR or RMR is basal metabolic rate or resting metabolic rate. This is the minimum daily calories that you need to consume in order to sustain a healthy metabolism at your current body composition level. This is how many calories you're gonna burn in a 24 hour period. You can figure out that number at that website. Um, so let's use this example. Uh, this is actually uh, something I did earlier today with a client and uh, this was their specific numbers rounded uh, obviously, but they burn about 1200 calories a day uh, just in a sedentary state. This is their resting metabolic rate. Um, so you can see that re is represented by this line right here. The reason I say it's the minimum, not the maximum, the minimum daily calories that that particular person should eat is because there's things that happen in your body when you chronically, or over a long period of time, eat below your basal metabolic rate. Things like losing muscle, slowing down of your metabolism, those are very closely related, uh, increases in fatigue, lack of energy, and poor recovery from workouts. So when you're in this state, your body produces higher levels of the stress hormone cortisol and is not able to fully recover because you're not giving it adequate nutrition for recovery, okay? Um, as a result, when your cortisol levels are high, it's sending a signal to your body that you're in an, uh, a, a high stress state. And one thing that your body likes to do when it's in a high stress state is store fat as a survival mechanism. So you can sometimes see weight gain when you have chronically high cortisol levels. And when that will happen when you're in this, you know, below basal metabolic rate range of eating calories, okay? So if you do this on a long-term basis, that stress hormone will be released. And obviously we're not perfect. You're not gonna be eating the best quality foods or you're not gonna continue to eat below this number. And you might go dine out with friends or you might drink some alcohol or different things like that. And you might have some unhealthy foods or you might overeat above this number. The problem with that is even if you're dieting and you're trying to eat well, but you're eating below this number and that signal is being sent and then you overeat, what's gonna happen is you're gonna actually gain weight. Yeah, even though you're not eating more than you're burning necessarily, but because the change in what's happening in your metabolism with your hormones and then with pure, uh, small periods of overeating or overconsumption. So this is a vicious cycle that most people and probably you can relate to is when you chronically undereat or you chronically diet underneath a healthy amount of calories for too long, you lose muscle, it slows down your metabolism, you don't feel good, you don't recover well, which causes you to increase your cortisol levels and then you obviously fall off the wagon, you lose your willpower, you lose your discipline and you'll end up overeating and you just go through the cycle over and over again. So what you get is increases in fat storage, decreases in muscle, and then obviously that creates a slower metabolism. So then you end up being unhappy with where you're at. So what I need you to do is go to that website, figure out what at least this number is. It's the first number that pops up after you do your calculation. It's your basal metabolic rate. Don't eat below this number. Don't eat below it. I don't care what you've heard. I don't care what diets say. I don't care what um, even some doctors might say. I don't recommend that you eat below this number. You need to be eating at it or above it and then burning that off from exercise. So the other thing is digestion. You're gonna burn about 10% of these calories 
from digestion. This is called the thermic effect of food, or TEF is what we call it. So just think calories burned from digestion, it's about 10% of that number. Then physical activity, walking around, uh, going to work, that kind of thing, um, and then exercise is lumped in there too. Okay, so that's physical activity. So you're gonna burn a certain amount of calories from digestion, and a certain amount of calories from physical activity, and a certain amount of calories from your basal metabolic rate. This total amount of calories equates to what we call your total daily energy expenditure, or total daily burn. Okay, for this particular client, it happened to be almost exactly 1,000 calories, 2,200 calories. Uh, 1,000 calories over their BMR is what I meant. So 2,200 calories total. So that means that if this person is not in a chronically uh, stressed state and this fat storage um, uh, stress cycle that people go through, but they're eating at least this many calories, um, then this is the window of calories that we can use for burning fat, okay? So you're gonna hit your minimum need, so your metabolism will function on a normal basis and you can preserve your, your muscle mass, possibly even gain some depending on how you're training and how you're eating. And then this, just so you know, the physical activity component for this particular example, this isn't everyone, this was calculated at three to five workouts per week, leaning more towards the five workouts per, per week side for this particular client, right? This is a case study, so these numbers are not necessarily your numbers. So the less you exercise, the, this total daily burn line comes down, okay? So if you don't exercise at all, you're gonna have this tiny little window of you know, calorie burn that you can leverage for fat loss. Uh, the problem with that is it's so little. So you can see this big calorie window from five workouts per week for this client um, allots them about a thousand calorie deficit uh, maximum. That might even be a little bit less uh, to just be conservative. So if our client, this example client, ate at their BMR, so they got the minimum calories they needed, but did five workouts per week and burned 2,200 calories per day, they have a thousand calorie deficit which is represented by this pink line here. So this can all be fat loss for that client, okay? Because they've pushed this line up through more exercise and physical activity. So they get more area uh, of calorie deficit to leverage fat burn, all right? So the goal here, if your goal is fat loss, is to get the total daily energy expenditure line higher or number higher and eat at your BMR or slightly above it so you get this safe window of fat loss where you're not under stress, you're not losing muscle, you're not going through high cortisol levels, and you don't lose your willpower and end up binge eating or overeating. But you're also not gaining weight from overconsumption of food, eating above your total daily burn, because over past this line, you're gonna have weight gain. Now, some of this could be muscle, and some of this can be fat, depending on how you're eating and how you're exercising. So some of your goals, if your goals are muscle, building, you would definitely want to eat at or above this number because you're likely not going to build very much muscle in this area. You might build a little bit just from the stimulus of weight training and eating some more protein at first, but after a few weeks, this that's going to stop and um, you're going to need to eat at or above your total daily burn to uh, cause weight gain um, from muscle. And just know you might gain some fat in your muscle development goal uh, process. But if your goal is fat loss, we're not eating above this line. We're not eating below this line, okay? So basically, that is how you wanna approach your nutrition, is you wanna figure out what that BMR is, go to this website to figure it out. You can kind of ignore the rest of those numbers once you've found out BMR or RMR and then your total daily burn. Eat between those two numbers for fat loss and don't eat below BMR and don't eat above total daily burn or total daily energy expenditure. And then what's gonna happen is all you have to do is increase your exercise. Increase your exercise, it broadens this deficit window that you can play around with, and in order to lose one to two pounds of fat loss per week, you need to be in a deficit of about 500 to 1,000 calories per day. So in fact, I'm actually just gonna write this right here. Okay, so 500 to 1,000 calories per day in a deficit. You probably can't read that because my handwriting's terrible. But if you do that, you'll lose about one to two pounds of body fat per week. But you must do it following these rules. If you don't do it following these rules, you probably won't see the results that you wanna see. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that gave you a better understanding of how some of the components of your metabolism works and how 
um, certain calorie components work in your body uh, for fat loss and muscle development goals. If you like this video, leave a comment below. If you don't like it, go ahead and leave a comment below. Uh, give me your feedback. Let me know if this was helpful. If you want other kinds of content or similar content in the future, I'm happy to help you out. Uh, send me a direct message, whatever. We're here for you. Thanks again. Talk to you soon.